Okay, just got this one in the mail. Let's see what this is. Been ordering some stuff for my uh, mad science projects. Okay. Oh, okay, wow. 300 watt tweeters. They're pretty heavy, too. Take a look what's inside of here, I guess. Been working on some high power ultrasonic projects. Actually, kind of big. Titanium bullet tweeters. Wow. Feels like they got a super magnet also back here. See those screws are sticking, sticking to the back of it. That's good. Making some pretty awesome products. Oh, look at this a capacitor. We have a capacitor on the back to match it. 300 watts. And it says 4 ohms or 8 ohms impedance. I wonder how you switch that. I can measure it with a voltmeter and see what it is. Pretty nice looking speaker, though, huh? Wow. Much of that can put out the power. I got these other ones over here. Here, let's see. I think they're only like about 240 watts. It's going to be 300 watts. Well, oh gosh. Okay. Let's see what the frequency response of these things is. It should be interesting. Okay, so I just put these speakers back to back. Okay. And um, just going to see what the relative response is. And let's, uh, turn, we have it hooked up, one of the speakers hooked up to our signal generator. And we'll put it on the 100K scale and turn up the power. Okay. And so there is 9 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. 11 kilohertz, looks like it's got a very strong uh, resonance at 11. 12 kilohertz, okay, frequency's back down. That's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And these, these are supposed to be good up to 25. This is 21, 22, 23, 20, oh. I pass it. Okay. That's 25 right there. Okay. And so 28. So it looks like they are good up to about 25. Looks like they're putting out audio power at least. Sound waves. Okay, I'm up to 40. 50. 60, okay, probably most people don't care about these frequencies, 80, but I'm trying to do some experiments with ultrasound, 100 kilohertz, okay, so it looks like these speakers cut off at about 25 kilohertz, and they are 300 watts, right, let's get the light over here, 300 watt speakers, okay, and, you know, I probably should check the lower range also. Oh, I may have to charge the camera. Okay, I actually had to dial back the uh, power on the signal generator because um, I did have a full blast. But at um, at these lower frequencies, it is a lot, lot stronger resonance. This is one kilohertz. Of course, not at one kilohertz. We'll go up a little bit higher. It gets to be a very strong output. Okay, there's uh, 2 kilohertz. There's 3 kilohertz starting to pick up. 4 kilohertz. 
There's five kilohertz. There's really strong there. Six kilohertz, still pretty strong. Seven kilohertz. Eight kilohertz. Nine kilohertz. And there's 10 kilohertz. Okay, let's just pause that. And so here is what our signal looks like. And here's our speaker. Take a look at that. Okay, so there's the uh, lower range output. That's pretty annoying, isn't it? Let me turn this thing off. Okay, and so there's our speakers. This is the output speaker, and of course, reciprocity should hold the speakers also. It shouldn't matter whether you transmit with one and receive with the other. They're going to have the same frequency response. And so these speakers can go up to pretty high power. It looks like they have a power output at 25 kilohertz. They're not probably the same efficiency over the whole range. And uh, that would be interesting to compare these to like some other speakers that I have, uh, how efficient they are at putting out the sound, because the speakers only tell you how much power they're taking in, not how much sound wave power they're putting out. And so maybe I'll do a comparative study on that uh, one of these days, compare some of these speakers and see what the efficiency is of them. Should be interesting. Okay. Anyway, looks like my battery's about dead, so... There we go. Get that guy in there like that. Okay. Okay, so I have my ohm meter here, and just out of curiosity, it says it's 4 ohms into the speaker. Let me just test this. So I put the ohm meter across there, I have it on the ohm setting. And it says about 3.4 ohms. So it's pretty close. Of course, you know, uh, if you're an electrical engineer, you know the uh, impedance of an inductor, which is going to, is going to have a lot of inductance, uh, is going to uh, depend on the frequency. And so the impedance probably shifts around as you uh, change the frequency. But um, the resistive part at DC is definitely uh, close to this value that they're quoting here. So that will give us a good way to calculate power into it so we don't burn it out, hopefully. Okay. That should be very interesting. Huh? Anyway.